Today we're going to have a look at some more um, tricky questions on ADI part one. Um, questions often catch people out. Often this is because people rely too much on the apps and the websites to practice questions. And the problem on the real test is there going to be questions on, on those apps and on those websites. Um, but basically the answer to those questions will be in the DVSA's recommended um, reading. And the recommended reading basically is the highway code, know your traffic signs, driving the essential skills, and the driving instructor's handbook. Often people, if they are going to look at books, they only maybe just get the highway code. But look how much more information there is in these books. You could be asked about anything in any of these books. In theory, if you knew these books cover to cover, you would get 100% on your part one every single time. So let's get to it and have a look at the questions. Today we're going to be looking at questions based on the driving test, teaching styles and disabilities. So these are questions often people particularly struggle with as they're things you might not have thought about before. For questions on stuff like the highway code and how to drive, you'll probably know a bit about, but you might not have thought about how the driving test works, how to teach, and about disabilities when driving. So the first question is, how is coasting marked on the driving test sheet? So um, there's often a misconception at first, you'll think it's going to be to do with clutch, because coasting is basically pressing the clutch too early. But the DVSA don't actually mark it as clutch, they mark it as gears, and gears only, not clutch and gears, just gears. And the information on that is in the driving instructor's handbook on page 232. So it says here, it shows you um, examples, different faults for different categories on the marking sheet. And gears, you can get a fault for coasting under gears um, and not being neutral and needed, so sort of related to coasting. So that's that question there. Next one. How is the extended driving test different to a standard driving test? So you may have heard of an extended driving test and you may understand it's basically if someone's lost their license and when they go to court, the judge might say they have to do an extended driving test if they want to get their driving license back. So, and the answer of this one is again going to be in the driving instructor's handbook. So page 242. And it gives information, the extended test is much longer than the ordering test, lasting about 70 minutes. Um, and normal driving tests last 40 minutes, which is then explained a bit earlier in the driving instructor's handbook. So the extended driving tests last 30 minutes longer. So the answer will be C, its duration is 30 minutes longer. Standard test, 40 minutes. Extended test, 70 minutes, 30 minutes longer. So let's have a look at the next question. What bus must be removed from a car fitted with dual accelerator, brakes and clutch before it can be used to take a driving test? So um, the answer for this is in again driving instructor's handbook, page 163. So the dual accelerator. Dual accelerators are not normally fitted to driving instructor cars. If one is fitted, it must be removed while the vehicle is being used for a driving test. This is for safety reason, so the examiner does not make ped make press this pedal by mistake. As I guess if they accelerated um, the examiner and then they got into an accident, it will be a very tricky situation for the insurance company. The, accelerator, the examiner is the one that's accelerated them into the hazard, but then they're not the one actually physically driving the car. So I suppose they just remove the accelerator just to remove any of that ambiguity that kind of confusion really um, with the insur if, the, if you got into a collision with the insurance companies. So answer is, where is it? A, accelerator. You must not have a dual accelerator fitted when doing a driving test. And even on lessons, you don't normally have one fitted. It's very unusual to have one fitted. Hi guys, I thought I'd just show you this book to add to your collection. The New Driver's Handbook. It's a three in one book and it's got some pretty good reviews from a driving examiner and a driving instructor. It has over 800 practice theory test questions. 
common driving test faults, driving test general tips, and advice on dealing with nerves on the big day. Finally, it has tips for after you've passed your test, including vehicle maintenance and driving abroad. You can find a link to this book in the description below. Now, back to the video. Um, Colour blind drivers are able to distinguish between red and amber flashing lights at hazards, such as level crossings, because red flash lights flash side to side, together, top to bottom, or diagonally. So, this information isn't specifically, doesn't specifically say this in the books, but in Know Your Traffic Signs, it has pictures of level crossings, and pictures of flashing lights at things like um, the outside schools. And you'll see at level crossings, the lights are red, and they flash side to side. And when you need to stop for the, for the train, when the barrier is about to come down. So I suppose the way I think about this is when it's flashing red, it's like saying it's going side to side, like say no. So it's going no. Side to side, no, don't go. Um, and then when it's flashing up and down, it's kind of saying, yes, you can go, but proceed with caution. Um, so, yeah, so the answer to that one would be red lights, let's just go up, red lights flash from side to side. So you don't need to know what colour they are, you just need to know they flash from side to side if you're um, a colour blind driver. So, next one. Where will we find a list of disability assessment centres? The Essential um, Instructor's Handbook, Driving the Essential Skills, Highway Code, or Know Your Traffic Signs. So, it is page 335 to 336 of the Driving Instructor's Handbook. So it has a list of them here. The main one that normally used is QEF, the Queen Elizabeth Foundation. Um, and basically, yeah, they, they, if someone's got a disability, they can go there to be assessed to decide what adaptions they might need to their car if they feel they are going to be able to drive. Um, and then there's also another one here, which I think this is the one um, for Wales, I believe. Um, never really heard of it. They've all, all gone the driver mobility. So, but basically, yeah, they're there. Page 335 to 336 of the Instructor's Handbook. So, on to the next question. Now, these actually, the last two questions, there's not information on these in these um, publications. I believe that's because the inf these questions are old questions on the old syllabus, but the DVSA still like to ask them for some reason. Um, so the first one is learning by rote um, is an appropriate teaching method for memorising facts and figures, problem solving, teaching has a perception, or teaching coordination? The answer to this one is going to be memorising facts and figures. So learning by root, an example would be maybe learning your times tables. So one times two is two, two times two is four, and so on, where you're just, when you're at school, you might have just repetitively just gone through the timetables to try and learn those facts and figures. Um, and... I suppose the way I also think about it, I when I think of rote, I must add a U in and change it into root. So it's learning by just repeatedly doing the same route, or maybe try by trying to learn a test route. That would be learning by rote. So it doesn't really encourage any thinking or understanding, um, but it might be quite good for someone they're very, very new. You might just repetitively repeat a skill or repeat a route of maybe some left some simple left turns just to develop the skill when someone's very new to something. But as they develop, it's not a very effective way of teaching. How we want to be teaching as they develop is this. The Gestalt method of teaching is based on, and the answer is going to be understanding the subject matter. So, and that's, this is what we want to really be teaching. They need to understand what they're doing, not just learning the test routes, and just going round the same road again and again and again and again. They need to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. So they can then use those skills in a different situation. Maybe they're driving in a different town. They understand that it's maybe the right lane they need to use that roundabout. 
because they need to read the road signs and read the road markings and to tell them what lane to use. So they're not just going in that right lane because you've told them a hundred times it's the right lane this roundabout, that's what you need to do on your test. So yeah, that's what Gus told is. It's understanding the subject matter. This one, oh, this one just here. So, and that's the last question for today. Um, I hope this video helped. Please do consider a liking and subscribing. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and bye for now.